Hi everybody, it's the 5th of April and uh, here we are at Waterbury Gardens. It's a beautiful Sunday. It's a shame you can't all be here. I thought I'd take some time to tell you about the obelisk at Waterbury because a lot of people don't really understand why this great big phallic like thing is here in such a feminine feminine garden. So this was the idea of Bernard Saunders. He'd been on a trip to, um, to Egypt Egypt and he'd been really struck by the obelisks they have there and he'd heard that uh, the idea of the, the obelisks that they have there is that they send a prayer up into the sky for the gods. So he commissioned a relatively young stone carver um, to, do, to carve it for him. This wasn't originally where it was going to be placed, it was actually going to go in the rose garden but we found the logistics of moving it there were so tricky in a fairly soft garden that it ended up being here. Uh, so like I say, the idea is to send a prayer up into the sky and this is the prayer that Bernard chose. He chose, all be happy, all be without disease, all creatures have well-being and none should be in misery of any sort. And he also put the Sanskrit on the other side that we'll show you in a minute. But I thought I'd just tell you a little bit about the process of making it. So this is made in Balmoral granite. It's about the hardest carving stone you can get. And this weighs about four and a half tons. So Balmoral granite actually comes from, I think it's Norway. And I'm embarrassed to say that what I actually did to make it cost effective is we shipped the stone all the way from Norway to China to get it cut into the shape it is, it's in three pieces and then it was delivered back to England so that's a horrendous car carbon footprint and uh, when it came back to England I carved the lettering on the obelisk. The tools I used was uh, after a bit of experimentation I ended up using an air hammer I, got, I had tons of air, air hammers in these those days. This is a little one, it's my favourite one, it's a beautiful little air hammer. And, um, and tungsten carbide chisels. So when I got a process going, what I used to do is I used to sharpen about 20 chisels, all in a, put them out all in a row, and then I'd start my carving, I'd start carving the lettering, uh, something like this and I would be able to make a pass, maybe two or three passes before the chisel was completely blunt then I'd put it down and get on to chisel number two. So 20 chisels used to last me about an hour and then I used to have to sharpen them all up again. The reason why I used an air hammer rather than doing it by hand is because it gave me a nice consistent sort of brrr, brrr, rather than chunk, 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 which makes it more likely for a stone made of these little particles like Balmoral granite is to pop out. Also it means you can sort of carve down into the stone more rather than carving along and you need a lot of space to swing a hammer because you need to hit the chisel really hard to make anything happen. So that's a bit about the process. Right, we'll go around and look at the Sanskrit on this side. Now I'm not a Sanskrit expert, so you'll have to put up with my pronunciation of it. But starting from the top, we've got Om, which is a sacred symbol, um, and is the symbol used to represent the absolute or God or the divine power. And then after that, we've got Sarve Bawantu Sukina, Sarve Santu Niramaya. Sarawe Badrani Pashyantu Ma Kashchid Du Kabag Bawait. So that translates as we know. Oh, and then of course the prayer isn't finished, it isn't completed until you say peace and peace and peace be everywhere. Or on the Sanskrit on the other side, that 
translates into the well-known Om Shanti 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 I think the reason why they repeat the piece three times is uh, it takes it takes three times to say it to get into our thick skulls but also it might just be that um, it's one piece for every one of the three worlds so that's the spiritual world the subtle world and the physical world so peace is spread and given to everybody so I think particularly in these times today this is a fantastically appropriate prayer to be sending up to the gods and to be giving to everybody it's all inclusive and I don't know much about the power of prayer but many people believe in it a lot and so I think this would be a really appropriate appropriate prayer for us all if we believe in this kind of thing to be saying every day so you can say it with me if you like so that's all be happy all be without disease all creatures have well-being and none should be in misery of any sort. <laughs>